trying to order the material, but then it has a natural chaos as well. The way you go about making something has to be very deliberate. There is a place for objects that are made by head, hand and heart and are used that way. I'm a sculptor. I'm a silversmith. I'm a glassmaker. I am a potter. I suppose I'm a maker. A vertical mill is a mill that takes in fibre from sheep and cards it, spins it, dyes it and uh, turns it into yarn. My name is Philip Cushton and I am the managing director of, of this company now. Don't be put off by the title. I do the work here. I do anything that's to be done. We started off with the fleeces coming in from Susanna. I'm Susanna Crampton and these are some of my Zwarteblas sheep which I have for milk, meat, and wonderful wool, which I bring down to Cushendale Mill. We will be spinning them and making yarn and blankets purely of zwartable fleeces. My name is Andrew Forrestal. I'm a sheep and cattle farmer. Oh, I've been shearing sheep for about 22 years. This is the comb and this is the cutter which goes on top of the comb usually just shear with the one hand over the years you build up the technique you get better at it the Zwartable is it seems to have a softness and it's a nice dark chocolate color uh, you know that really dark rich rich feel about it if you just dyed that color it would really be flat but because the slight variations in the color get a nice look to the cloth it's a really fantastic fibre. We just had to have a look through the wool to remove the blemishes, like maybe some straw was mixed in with the wool. Then the wool went into a machine which washed away the, just the surface grease. We spin dry it then. And then just lay it out on trays and we dry it. And then we put a mixture of oil and water on it to bring back the moisture content a little bit. That oil is needed to lubricate the fibre as you're carding and spinning so that the individual fibres can pass by one another. We then put it through a machine called the teaser. And the teaser breaks up all the fleeces into a tufts of fluff and then it blows it out so it helps to mix in the oil through the fibres. We've always had a history too of using only natural fibres because that's sustainable in the long run. So the natural fibre just runs on grass. It'll run forever if you just take care of the environment. We've collected up the wool and afterwards and put it into a bale and brought it into the carding machine. You put the wool in it to the hopper at the start of the carding machine and it goes through a series of rollers which are all covered with spikes. It starts off with very coarse spikes and then as you go through the machine they get finer and finer. At that stage you're getting all the fibres aligned. It's carded about 60 inches wide and it comes out like a cobweb and that cobweb is split into about 100 little ribbons. The ribbons are rolled up by rubbing, which turns them into a kind of round, like a, almost like a cord, but completely no strength in it. The oldest machine we have is a spinning machine. I'd say it was probably about 1890s, just around that date. We've been saying would we scrap this, I don't know how many times, but I'm glad we didn't. So in the spinning process then, the carriage comes out on the mule for about seven feet. It's unrolled from the big bobbin with 24 threads on it and each spindle turns an individual thread. It puts in the twist and when you have the right amount of twist, the yarn is wound up onto the bobbin. But I've always been spinning. Actually, I started when I was quite young. I think I was only about 13. It's not like sitting down in the classroom and learning. You're just, you're just picking it up from the time you're very young. I suppose that's an advantage. That's true of any family type business. I just could do it with Mary's clothes, you know. And I, I just listen to the machine. She can talk to me. You know? At that stage then we put on the new bobbin up on top and then we took off the full bobbin from underneath and brought it onto the winding where it wound onto a cone which was about a kilo cone. That's a good way to work with. So when we had the cone done then we put two cones together and put two threads of yarn parallel to one another wound it onto one cone. This was going for hand knitting yarn and then it went from there to the twister. The double yarn became twisted and it went up onto the, the cone on the top of the machine. And when that was full, then that went on to make a, a hank of yarn. 
the hank of yarn has to be washed to get rid of all the oil and any dirt that would have been picked up. The washing will also set the twist so that it'll be stable when you come to knit it afterwards. And from there you can either turn it into knitting yarn then or make it up into a cloth. It could be throws, scarves, blankets. I love using Cushendale because it has a lot of traditions surrounding it and the small scale, if I went to a bigger scale place, they wouldn't be able to handle the small quantity of fleeces that I have. It just wouldn't work. I wouldn't be afraid of technology. I mean, technology is there to be used. It's like a chisel, it's like a hammer. If somebody produces a better hammer, well, use it. The thing is, I think they have to be able to repair it and know, to know what the function is and then Nobody's going to pull the wool over your eyes.